a very happy new year. We know it has been a very trying time for you, as it did look for a while very much as if Seattle was going to be a target on this evening. And though it was a very controversial decision, the mayor of Seattle decided first to uh, cancel the public ceremony around that famous needle, the symbol of Seattle in so many ways, and then the private party that was going to be held up there as well was also canceled. But the fireworks tonight in Seattle, we're glad to see because it engages the city with us and the rest of the world. Speaking of which, ABC's Bob Brown has spent a very long and we think very productive day gathering the highlights of the day as we have moved across the world. And here is his latest rendition of what has happened as one century has turned over to the other. Past the midnights, toward the dawns, through what people feared might happen and what they hoped would, this has been a day of spectacle in which all the world was a stage. As New York City raised the crystal ball, it would drop at midnight. A human conductor led a virtual orchestra with a laser baton, a virtuoso feat of the kind of technology that has defined the end of this millennium. But the fire of old-fashioned enterprise has also played a prominent role. After all, the South Pacific island nation of Kiribati had the international dateline reconfigured so that it would be the first to celebrate the new millennium. Kiribati had seen heavy casualties during World War II when U.S. troops drove out Japanese forces. My dear child, take this torch of peace and hope from Kiribati so that it may light the whole world. An old man and a boy headed out to sea in the direction of the next midnight while dancers chanted a goodbye to the pain of the past in a ceremony of good luck. How quickly things seemed to move after that. In Auckland, New Zealand, the first city that might have experienced a millennium bug, there were no reported problems, only a giant celebration, although it will take much longer to assess what's really happened to the world's computers. And among them, midnight theatrics, often staged around familiar landmarks. The Sydney, Australia Opera House offered a performance unlike any that had been seen there before. Dancers, representing sea creatures from the harbor, roamed the roof as a million people watched. China, one of the countries that gave fireworks to the rest of the world, had an impressive display of its own in Shanghai. But officials, anxious to dispel concerns that the country could be a Y2K disaster, kept its airlines flying past midnight to engender confidence. And in Beijing, the official celebration that started at midnight ended at 12.08. Far away from this performance of a national traditional music troupe in Seoul, Korea, others went up to the demilitarized zone where no photograph signs were posted to hang messages on barbed wire wishing for peace with the North. God, please let these reunions happen, said one. The same hopes for peace in a different area of the world were represented in a joint concert between singers in Dublin, Ireland and Derry, Northern Ireland. And evidence that hopes can be reached was on Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela spent most of his 26 years in prison before becoming president of South Africa. So many symbols of the past century were lit by their celebrations. Moscow, the capital of a nation which came into being in revolution, became a superpower, then dissolved in disarray. Despite terrible problems, Moscow celebrated in style. But on the Horn of Africa, territory over which the superpowers once struggled, ABC's Jim Wooten found silence. Going from midnight in Moscow to midnight in Ali Day, just listen. There's not a sound here. 11,000 refugees from Somalia have gone to bed. In Bethlehem, despite fears of terrorism, the celebration was peaceful and magnificent before a crowd that was overwhelmingly Palestinian. From the streets of India filled with unbridled celebrations to the stunning views of the Acropolis in Greece, 
a masterpiece before we began counting these last two millennia, the visual feast got better and better. Sites we thought we knew well, such as the Eiffel Tower in Paris, were completely redressed for the occasion. Cities like London added new technological marvels. The Millennium Dome cost more than a billion dollars and showed off the old ones as never before. Rio provided a shot of adrenaline that could only have come from Rio. And then it was time for the countdown in the U.S. The clock finally swept into our own time zones as if it had been wound even more tightly by the events that had preceded these for 18 hours. Two million people let loose in Times Square. There was so much to look at, it boggled the senses. A trip around the world that Jules Verne could barely have imagined. But what stood out among all the pyrotechnics is the humanity that we so often doubt, but saw here on one of its better days, stretched from the great and the small to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Bob Brown. One of the better days indeed. In a moment, we're going to go to the big Cypress Seminole Indian Reservation in Florida, where thousands and thousands of their fans caused a stampede to get there tonight just to hear fish. We'll be right back. This is Unison. Attack happening down here as well. We've slowed it down, though, as you can see.